Welcome to my apartment workshop. What's up guys, my name's Caleb, I'm the Furniture Cowboy, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a tour of my apartment workshop. So I don't know if you've been following me recently, but for the past eight months, my wife and I have been refinishing furniture here in Austin, Texas. Very recently, we've decided to switch from refinishing furniture to creating our own furniture. So the last video we did, if you didn't see it, was a total transformation of this entire garage space which going forward is gonna better suit our needs and make things a little bit easier for building. Without further ado, let's get right into this tour. We're gonna be starting off with my most recent purchase, our table saw setup. This is our new Delta table saw. This is my baby right here. We just bought this thing for $675. It's just fantastic. Just total upgrade in every way compared to our previous table saw. The only downside I've seen with this table saw is that it doesn't have that great of dust collection. I think that's a pretty easy upgrade and one I'm gonna do pretty shortly. The other thing I will say about, I think it's just my specific table saw, the knobs that it came with, like this knob right here, there's supposed to be two others. So that knob is supposed to go right here to raise up the blade. I think they sent us the wrong knobs because ours won't fit in this hole. Just a little sad about that, but I'm sure if I emailed them, they would send me new knobs. But who's gonna do that, you know? Maybe I will, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> but anyway, we also got this outfeed table. We actually had a, a hell of a time finding an outfeed table because we tried at first to repurpose the table we already had and just raise it up with some legs, but it was way too wobbly. This one is one we got right after that one broke. We picked it up from Goodwill. It's the, It just happened to be the right height and it's nice and sturdy. I can, you know, it's not going anywhere. So I would say if you're refinishing furniture, this is a bit overkill. It's definitely not what I started out with. For building furniture, you are gonna need something like this. And I think this one is pretty awesome bang for your buck. I think the next step up is like $3,000. This one was only mid 600. Overall, really pleased with this saw. Is it necessary? Maybe, depends what you need. Underneath it, we keep our dust extractor, which is another recent purchase. This one, again, Probably not necessary if you're just refinishing furniture, but if you're doing heavy woodwork or if you have a table saw like this, definitely necessary. This thing produces a ton of dust when you're getting cuts, as well as the router table, which we'll get to in a second, creates just dust galore. So this thing has come in clutch for us and definitely something we needed. Okay, so this is our last remaining portion of the garage that we still use for spraying. This wall here, this entire wall used to be covered head to toe with plastic. It used to extend all the way and then the floor was also covered. But now all we need to paint is drawer fronts. So I just put this piece of plywood here. This wouldn't actually be something we would spray, but we would put it here. And then I have this system on a Lazy Susan where I just grab a piece of cardboard. Maybe not that one. Whatever, you get the idea. I would, <laughs> I would grab a piece of cardboard and I would hold it and while I spray, kind of do that. Here, let me, let me get you this thing. So we've got our cardboard here. We're gonna hold that and as we spray, I've even got the spray gun. As we spray, you just follow it along. We used to wrap all of our drawers with paper and tape, which wastes a ton of paper and tape. I don't know, I thought this was really cool. I actually got a few angry comments on YouTube saying, you didn't, you didn't invent this, which, it's just so funny to me, I, I don't know. <laughs> they said someone else invented it. I went and watched a ton of that person's videos. I couldn't find anything like this, but whatever. Maybe they did. I'm not claiming to invent it. I just think it's funny what people get angry about. So if you're angry about that, let me know <laughs> in the comments. I think it's cool and I think, you know, it's always good to eliminate as much waste as you can. All right, so in this corner here, we have kind of a lot to unpack. I will preface this by saying it's not all that organized. You know, it was a lot worse a couple days ago and we will probably go through and get it like really organized. This drawer says paint. It's not paint in there. And that's okay, because we know it's not paint. Looking here, I do want to start by saying we have a ton of clamps 
This is the clamp that we started with. Going back in time, I would probably start with two clamps, but you can start with just one. And we've worked our way up to, now we have tons and tons of clamps. We have enough to do glue ups, multiple glue ups at once. We've got old Bessie here, parallel clamp. This thing is awesome, weighs like 10 pounds. Yeah, we've got, this is just where we keep all of our tools that we need to access at any given time. I have a biscuit joiner here, which is super awesome. It was a gift from my father-in-law. Huge shout out, thank you so much. We have an iron. You might be thinking, what the heck is he doing with an iron? We use it for edge banding, so whenever we're working with plywood, we have to edge band any exposed plywood edges. And we would be remiss if we didn't mention our pocket hole jig. This thing is awesome. We use it all the time. And yeah, other than that, just anything we need to grab really quickly. We've got like a, a gallon of, you know, the OG tight bond ultimate wood glue. This stuff is awesome. And then we just refill the container as needed. We've also recently switched to this one, which I've heard is even better, but it's a little less liquidy, if that makes sense. We've got these drawers, edge banding. This is a disaster. Like I said, we're gonna reorganize it in the future. This is actually uh, one of the dressers. It's one of the first dressers we ever got. We were planning on flipping it and we were gonna do like a you know, DIY Ikea hack because it's an Ikea dresser, but it's just in super rough condition. I could probably knock this off if I wanted. You know, it's got some screws that people, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but someone did that, so. We decided to just keep it as a, as a storage dresser and it's, you know, it's worked wonders for us. So as you can see, my wood is separated into two piles. This one is our MDF and then random assortment of wood going on over here. And this is our plywood pile, which we use to make our dressers. Here we've got some kind of shims we've created. This is MDF, but we keep it over here because this is the dresser pile. I actually want to come back over here for a second and touch on this. So tools that we started out with, it wasn't this exact one, but if you're getting into furniture, refinishing, this is something that you can't go without. Orbital sander, don't get a cheaper sander, go with this one. It doesn't have to be this exact one, but get a random orbital sander. You'll thank me later, it's awesome. The other tool, the other one tool that you can't live without is a drill. So this is my drill, I use it all the time. It's a drill, you know. Get yourself one. Anyway, stay on, stay on track. What? A man can't knock on his walls in these. Um, where was I? You put food. I went to the restroom. So, another thing I want to mention, if you guys are thinking of doing something like this out of your garage, you might be wondering like, how the hell are people not you know, complaining about all the noise he must be making. We hung these lights so we can keep working well into the evening. Sometimes we stop working at like 10 p.m. So why don't people complain? The walls, I will say, are really good at keeping the noise in, but also, even during the daytime, it's probably a good idea to stop working past a certain point, but during the daytime, one thing that came in clutch for us is right next door, we have the garage taken up by the maintenance team for our apartment complex. So they're already making a ton of noise. And in fact, a ton of people have walked up to me and I've, I wear like a matching blue shirt some days to what they wear. And they've asked like, hello, are you maintenance? And I'm like, <laughs> what's the accent? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, they say, hey. Hello. Hello, are you maintenance? And I say, no, I'm not maintenance. And they say, you, you build furniture. And I say, yeah. And they say, can you build me, can you build me this? And they show me some, something ridiculous. I have no idea what it is. And I say, no, I can build you a dresser. And they say, oh, thank you, thank you. And they walk away. But anyway, if you are planning on getting into something like this, I would definitely recommend asking your apartment complex, are there any garages that are being used by the maintenance staff? And is there one available next to one of those? Because that's gonna make things so much easier for you because the people living above and around those garages are already gonna be used to noise that they can't really complain about. It just comes with 
having an apartment. Long rant, lo bit of a tangent there, but just wanted to, you know, I feel like that's good advice. Anyway, onto this set of tools. We have here, moving right along, this is our miter saw. And if you are refinishing furniture, I would say this is the only table saw you need, is a miter saw. This thing is awesome. You can opt to go for like a 12 inch that you can pull forward to make you know, really, really precise cuts with very little tear out, even on bigger boards. Or you can go with a 10 inch like I've got here that you can't pull forward, but I mean, this thing is awesome. It lets you cut all sorts of angles. Oh, and it's sitting on the old table saw, which I think I'm gonna get a little fancy here and turn this into just a dado saw. So I'll be able to say, I have a saw specifically for making dados, and I also have our even better table saw. So moving right along, we've got our band saw, which right now has our handy dandy dowel cutting jig. It's got a little V groove here and a razor blade behind. We just slide dowels through. Uh, if you don't follow us on Instagram, you can check out our Instagram and see a ton of stuff we've done with dowels. It is an awesome way to completely transform a piece of furniture that might be on its way to the landfill and really make it look like something elevated and organic that you would see from a company like Anthropology or West Elm. So we made a ton of money doing that. Dowel cutting jig came in clutch. A lot of people have been asking, when will you sell pre-cut dowels on your Etsy? And for now, that's something that I'm struggling with because I would wanna make them long enough that people can kind of cut them themselves. That way they would be able to fit whatever type of, you know, whatever size drawer you have. But the longer I make them, the more they're twisting. So I'm still working on that. Uh, no dowels as of yet. What we've been doing recently instead of dowels, we did it on our first dresser that we built, is cove cuts. And I actually have one over here. This is the rough batch. This was like the, the first trial that we did, but um, this is a cove cut. So one thing I'm considering doing is selling these on our Etsy instead. This would be kind of the same idea, um, a simple way to totally transform a piece that is pretty bland looking and give it a ton of character, a ton of style. So let me know if you're interested in that. Sorry the dowels can't be done, but you know, we've got these for you if you want them. So that's the bandsaw, it's also fantastic for creating round cuts. Even if you can't get a perfectly round cut, you can cut a ton of tiny angles and then sand the rest down. One of the best things you can do is create legs and then give them kind of a rounded look and just, you know, that's just in right now and people love it. Moving on, we have our router table. This thing is awesome. So the router, we've got a Porter and Cable router which was another gift from my father-in-law. Thank you. And we got the table afterwards. We managed to get a Porter and Cable table, Porter and Cable table, that actually is meant to go with this exact router, which is pretty awesome. We got a little bit of a sneaky bit here. This is one that's hard to find. This is a Queen Anne's bit. It creates a really like subtle round over. We had a really hard time finding this bit, but it is awesome and creates a really subtle look that kind of draws your eyes in and I love it. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for my apartment workshop tour. If you guys have any questions, if there's anything that I kind of skimmed over that you wanted to hear more about, or just anything I didn't touch on that you were hoping I would, please leave that down below in the comments. I love reading questions from you guys. Yeah, I'm interested to know what you wanna know about. That's my workshop. That's what I'm working with. If you guys like this video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to our channel if you want more videos like this. We've got more coming at you and click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on them because that's how it works nowadays. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.